In this video, I want to have a look at working with vectors in component and column notation. So we want to have a look at arithmetic and then we want to have a look at finding their magnitude and their direction. Okay, so if I consider two vectors, I've got my vector u and my vector v. I've written them out in component notation as x1i plus y1j. So x1 and y1 are just numbers. And then I've got my v as x2i and y2j. So x2 and y2 are just different numbers. Um, if I write them in column notation instead, it would look like these. So having a look at arithmetic, if I add those two vectors together, so if I do u plus v, the way it works in component notation is we're going to add the coefficients of that i. So we're going to have x1 plus x2 i plus y1 plus y2 j. Now if I were to add them in column notation, I can write that as that in the top I'm going to add my two x's together, so x1 plus x2, and then I'm going to add my y's together as well, so y1 plus y2. Alright, and the other one we wanted to have a look at is scalar multiplication. So if I've got my lambda, which is my scalar, multiplied by my vector, I'll just use u for this one, then what I can do is I can multiply each part. So I'm going to have lambda x1 i plus lambda y1 j. So multiplying each of those coefficients. And in column notation, again, it would be lambda x1 and lambda uh, y1. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. So in our example, we're given two vectors, u and v. And the first thing we're asked to find is 2u. So 2u is going to equal, and we're going to multiply the 3 first. So we would have 6i minus, and we've got a minus 1 out the front, multiplied by 2, so minus 2 j. Part b asks us to find 2u plus v. So if we rewrite that, we'd end up with 6i minus 2j. And then we're going to add v, which was our minus 2i plus 4j. Now if we go through and collect like terms, put the i vectors together and the j vectors together, we're going to have 6 minus 2, so we would have 4i uh, minus 2 plus 2. Four, so plus 2j, and they need my little tilde squid was underneath as well. In our second example, we're using column notation. Uh, given p and q, we want to find q minus p. So if we rewrite that, we're going to have 1, 3, minus 2, 1, and then we just go across our rows. So we're doing 1 minus 2 would give us minus 1, and 3 minus 1 would give us 2. And the second one has a half p. So what that means is we're doing a half of uh, 2, 1. So we're multiplying each of those numbers inside those square brackets by a half. So that means that our top one would be 1. The bottom one is going to be a half. Now you can either write it as a half or you could write it as 0 0.5. Either way is fine. So that's having a look at arithmetic. Let's have a look at magnitude next. So with magnitude, if we know the components, so if we can write our vector in component or column notation, then we can find its magnitude, which we write like this, by using Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to do the square root of x squared plus y squared. So the reason that works, if we think back to when we had our vector drawn uh, with its tail at the origin, coming up somewhere like this, if this is our vector p, then that x and y, oh, there's not a fraction line there, that x and y represent how far across it's come, so that's our x, and how far up it's moved as well, so that's y. If we're trying to find the length of that vector along there, that's the hypotenuse of our right angle triangle. Let's have a look at an example. So we're saying if we're given a, a vector, p, 3i minus 4j, we're trying to find its magnitude. So its magnitude is going to be, now we've written it in a different form this way, but our 3 is our x, and that minus 4 is our y, making sure that you take that sign out the front as well. So we could rewrite it if we wanted to as 3 minus 4, if it makes it a little bit clearer, but we don't have to. And then to find that magnitude, oh sorry, that wouldn't be that, it would be finding the absolute value of that vector, or the magnitude of that vector. So we're going to have 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. 
And if we work that out, we would end up with our vector being five units long. Now, if we have a look at direction, if we've got a vector v, then the direction of that vector is defined as the angle between that vector and the positive x-axis. So if we draw our diagram back up, if that's our x and y axes, and we've got a vector coming up here somewhere, then this angle here, we'll call it theta, is our direction of our vector. Now, if we have a look at that, if we know that it has components x and y, then you can see that we can use right angled trig to find the value of that angle. So we know that tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so tan theta equals x over y, and at the moment we're only talking about between 0 and 2 pi. But if we were to solve that, it would give us two answers for theta. It's going to give us um, it, an answer in two different quadrants, either the first and the third or the second and the fourth. So we need to know a bit of information about that vector, maybe what those coordinates are, will tell us which quadrant it is to be able to solve our problems. The last part of this is finding components. So working backwards to figure out what that x1 and y1 could be or are in a particular vector, if we know the length and the direction. So if we have a look at our diagram again, if we have our x1 and y1, we know that that's a right angled triangle. We also know that the length of this side is given by the magnitude of that vector. So we can use that to find our x1 and y1. So x1 would be, from, if we're finding this side here, from that angle that's our adjacent and our hypotenuse, which is cos. So we could find that x1 by doing the magnitude, so the uh, hypotenuse, multiplied by cos theta. And if we're trying to find y1, then we can do that magnitude multiplied by sine theta instead, because we've got our opposite and our hypotenuse. Let's have a look at an example of that. Okay, so we have two examples here. The first one asks us to find the vector v if we know that its length is 10 and that it has an angle of 150 degrees with the positive x-axis. So to do that, we're going to write v equals, now we know that our x1, so our coefficient of that i vector, is going to be 10 multiplied, so the magnitude, so the length, multiplied by cos of 150 degrees, and that's i, plus and then we're going to have 10 times sine of 150 degrees. Oops. And that's j. Now, going through and using those, you can draw up your all stations to central diagrams. Uh, we know that 150 degrees is over this way, and it's got a related angle of 30 degrees there. So cos is going to be negative. So we're going to have 10 times minus root 3 on 2, i. Plus, sine is going to be positive in that quadrant, so we're going to have 10 times a half j. And then we can just simplify that down. The 10 and the 2 will cancel, so we'll end up with minus 5 root 3 i plus 5 j. For our second question, we're asked to find the length and the angle to the nearest degree of this vector here. So if we're finding the length first, then we're going to take the square root of our x squared, so minus 2 squared, plus our y squared, so, sorry, not y, would be minus 1 squared. So that's going to give us the square root of 5. Now to find our angle, we know that tan theta is going to equal y on x, so minus 1 on minus 2, which would give us a half. Um, and if we take than tan inverse of a half, we would end up to the nearest degree at 27 degrees. Now, that's one answer, but it's not the answer we want, because if we have a think about this vector, we're starting here, we're going negative 2 in the x direction, and then negative 1 in the y direction, so our vector's coming down into this third quadrant here. So 27 is our related angle. So to find our actual angle, then we're going to have to do 180 degrees plus our 27 degrees. So we would end up with an angle of 207 degrees for our vector.